In the early 20th century, some of America's greatest writers got their start in the cheap, popular magazines known as Pulp Fiction, called that because of the wood paper they were printed on. Some say Pulp Fiction is hardly worth preserving. The Library of Congress disagrees. Chip Reed tonight has a look inside a remarkable restoration project. I have a piece of the pulp paper and it just, you can see what happens to it if you bend it at all. It really just disintegrates. Gene Drews manages a team of restoration experts at the Library of Congress. With over 14,000 pulp magazines and novels housed in the collection, they're trying to preserve the works before they disappear. It is a race against time, and every time something gets used that's in this fragile a condition, it can be further damaged. Pulp paper was never meant to be saved. Cheap to produce, the edges are ragged, but the titles, coupled with lurid covers, convinced millions of readers to part with their change. That was the bait. The covers were, were the bait. Crime writer and Pulp Fiction fan George Pelicanos says the books lit a fire under him. Pulp novels were about people who stumble, who go to work every day. They don't usually win big in the end, but they have these moments of inglorious redemption. Pulp Fiction created opportunities for some of America's most famous writers, like Earl Stanley Gardner, Ray Bradbury, and Raymond Chandler. Pelicanos says the writing sprang from the minds of men and women traumatized by war. They'd seen all sorts of horrible things, seen a lot of death, and they came back and started writing these very, very dark books. Chandler, when describing this, this genre, famously said, the streets were dark with something more than night. Some literary critics were unimpressed, but Pelicanos says Pulp Fiction is an important piece of literary history. I think as a cultural artifact, it's important to, to keep all of them and, and recognize that, um, that the genre produced some true masterpieces of American fiction. They transported readers to new and different worlds. That's the value of fiction, isn't it? To be able to um, put yourself in someone else's place for just a little while and experience that. And that's what these were. An experience the Library of Congress is now preserving for future generations. Chip Reed, CBS News, Washington.